This weekend, I read that Alex Jones is having to divest himself of Infowars, or at least his share in it. I don't, I don't know what that exactly means. He also said that uh, the feds were going to seize it if he didn't do something. Uh, I read that yesterday. We wanted to have Alex Jones on. We have a podcast uh, planned in September, so I, I want to kind of keep this narrow here on what's going on with him because I think this is, I think this is, he was the guy the left tried lawfare out on. You know, the the early days of boycott, Cheryl Atkinson said that trying to get somebody off a network and mainstream media, they tried to perfect that on me. I was their, their first real guinea pig. I think Alex Jones was the first guinea pig in lawfare, and it is exactly the same thing that's happening to Donald Trump now. Uh, this is this is the way they're going to fight in the future. And if anybody thinks, you know, whatever you think of of Alex Jones, what he said, uh, he's apologized for it. He said he shouldn't do it. Their damages, I don't know, but certainly not 1.5 billion. What is Doctor Evil? Was he in the jury box? What the hell is that? 1.5 billion dollars. We talked to Alex Jones about his situation, Alex. What are, what what is going to happen now? Because I read that you were having to sell your assets, but if you sell, there's there's nothing left. And you know who's going to buy? Honestly, Infowars without you is nothing. You are the asset of Infowars. So what what do you have? Are they forcing you to sell all of this stuff? Yes, and, and thanks for letting me give you the backstory. So so it, so it makes sense. Is what I told you sure. exactly what's happening. As usual, you cut right hard. Okay. I'm an LLC sole proprietorship, and so I own 100% of the shares of the company. That's why under law, the CRO could not just shut this place down. That's illegal. And so that's what my lawyers have told them. So I agreed to pay $55 million over 10 years, uh, which is projected what extra revenue there would be. But they said, no, we want a board, and we want to control what he says. This was in meetings we had. But I couldn't talk about it until outside of mediation. They now told my lawyers this a few weeks ago, right to their faces. My lawyer said, you can talk about it now. We can't believe it. They want you to start by not talking about the Second Amendment. And there's another thing. So they wanted me to sell out. And so they told oh Reuters. Absolutely, they told Reuters the most accurate story out there. Some of it's wrong, but it's, it's still pretty much true. The headline is Sandy Hook families agree to Alex Jones bankruptcy liquidation. Well, they'd already filed for that. And then in the article, they say, while liquidation will yield only a fraction of the money he owes the families, they objected to his proposal because it would have kept him in control of both InfoWars and his wealth for years, while also capping the total amount he would be paid towards the defamation claim. So they refused, and, and, and it goes on that they wanted to have a board control this place that they appointed where I would work with them, and then, of course, if I played ball – then, of course, I could make money. Well, so, so, so my, my operation's been taken over. For, for whatever reason, they decided to try to shut it down eight days ago outside of court, which is totally insane because they feel like, well, this guy's you know, a target. It's open season. Do what we want. And then now they're so panicked to get me off the air for whatever's coming for the rest of the country. And, and so that's what's happening. So what's going to go down is I, I, the judge will either give it back to me Friday, and then they'll just come with the state and shut it down in a week probably or quicker because uh, Austin's as bad as – Again, uh, New York or D.C., one of the worst jurisdictions in the country. I am going to move out of here, even though my family's from here since the start of Texas. Austin and is awful. It is. It is the judge. It's all woke. Soros controls the D.A. on record. He controls yeah, all the judges awful. because they're elected. It, it's totally controlled. So, so, so Infowars will. So I had to guess. Now hold on. Pull the- hold on. Hold on. Just a second. I'm sorry to do this to you, Alex, but I, I got to take another network break. Uh, back with Alex Jones to see where he's headed next, what his options are, uh, and um, and where the country is headed because of all this. Make no mistake, what they did to Trump, they first tried on Alex Jones, and they will do anything to silence anyone that has impact. Uh, for the first time, uh, I've asked Alex Jones to come on the program. <clears throat> I know Stu heard inklings of this last week and did... Uh, probably about 20 minutes of uh, tremendous defense of of you, Alex, on on this whole case. 
being just nothing but uh, just a show trial. That's all it is, is what they did to Donald Trump. They first tried out on you and they're still going for it. So I don't understand how a judge could suggest that we violate your First Amendment right by forcing you not to talk about the Second Amendment. I don't know how that's even possible. Um, But is this something that they suggested will stop demanding the billion dollars, billion and a half dollars, if you let us control what you say and don't say? Yes. Before I got sued, now six years ago, um, I was in D.C. for meetings, and I, and I all have private meetings. I've met with some of the Bilderberg Group members, some major billionaires. I'm sure you got reached out to by them as well when you were exposing Soros and trailblazing on Fox before they mm. targeted you. And they literally would beat around the bush and say, well, this major billionaire, richest man in the world at the time, you have to give you $50 million a year for a free speech foundation. You can still do your show if you'll just talk to us about you know cleaning up what you do. And it was so, so it was all thinly veiled mm. payoffs. And then when I didn't do it, that's 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 when they you know cooked all this up. And of course, a Project Veritas spinoff group caught an FBI slash CIA agent. It's all admitted, bragging how they engineered yeah. all this. And then again, even in the Sandy Hook show trial case, they they got the FBI agent up who won ninety five million dollars for me. I never said his name. Didn't know who he was till he sued me. And he said the reason he was suing was one person called his office to see if he was real at one time, but he admitted that he basically helped organize organize all of this. So as we said before we went to break, this is all about targeting the American people. But even in Connecticut and Texas, this is, this is all on TV, it's all on the record, the, the lawyers for the cases that all work for high-powered Democratic Party law firms, the same ones suing Elon Musk right now, they went on TV at press conferences when they won, because the judge already said they won, but the, after they had their show trial, Never send Alex Jones money. Don't buy his products. We don't want money. We want to shut him down. And so they well, made good on this. The judge is appointed by Trump. He's just following the law. They won't settle. So they have this judgment. And so he said he would just kick it back into state court, which they'll just instantly grab by operations, or they've got to settle. And they've now just admitted in the newspapers, we don't want money. He's a bad person. We want him off air. They're so arrogant. I mean, it's just like we've seen AOC – and a bunch of other Democrats the last month say, we've got to keep Trump in court so he can't campaign. It's, a, it's, it's an ankle bracelet. Uh, so, so they're so panicked, but also a mix of hubris at the same time, that they're admitting what they're doing. That's what's so crazy. So basically— But, but Alex, they can't—they they can't— I mean, maybe they can. They can't hold a judgment that you have no way to ever pay. Nobody, no individual, you know, unless you're Bill Gates, is paying $1.5 billion in a judgment, especially this one. Um, And I contend that no matter what, I mean, Bill Gates could have been on, you know, pedophile island on TV doing whatever he was doing. uh, And he still... Wouldn't have to pay one point exactly. five billion uh, for that, and I'm exactly. obviously so, not so, saying that he was doing anything on Pedophile Island. I'm just making that as an example. Anyway, um, so they can't keep they can't force you to not make any money at what you do for a living, can they? For the rest well, of your right. life? Well, no, no, you're totally right. They're showing they don't want money, but let me just explain this quickly. One week after they won the fake show trial, where the judge already said I was guilty in Connecticut. She issued an order to seize all my assets, even stuff under the Texas Constitution, like my house, that was protected, and immediately ordered me to, quote, bring bring all my property and my deeds to Connecticut or face imprisonment. That's why I had to file bankruptcy, hoping that the federal courts would be better. So the last two years, I've been battling there, and then they got so desperate eight, nine days ago, uh, two Fridays ago, to literally have – the the federally appointed CRO closed the building and kicked me out. So so okay. that's the level of this. And, and that's why I go back to this, Glenn. This is totally desperate. You're absolutely right. They beta tested getting people off networks with you. They have bragged about it. They beta tested lawfare against me for Trump. Now they're beta testing just grabbing stuff outside of law. That's this is just as Trump has said a thousand times. They're not trying to get me. They're trying to get through me to get to you. And that's what I'm oh, telling yeah. people. I am, a, I am a canary in the coal mine. They picked me because I have a big audience. 
but I'm also flamboyant, and I've been on air 30 years, and you can dredge up some stuff and make me look nuts, because I have said things when I was just joking around or whatever, being a jerk, that, that you know, I'm a different guy. This has taught me a lot. <laughs> Even before this, I was I was already cleaning up my act. But, 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 but now, I'm like a totally different gray-haired dude who just tries to do a professional show, and these people are so wild-eyed, they don't care. So I appreciate you standing up for the First Amendment. You know, I, I don't know where I'll be. I haven't entertained other jobs. I've tried to save this. But I feel like I have a family member that's on death's bed. People can find me at Real Alex Jones on X. And, and you know, they've said they're going to hunt me down and try to shut me down no matter where I go. But the law is very clear in Texas and federally. I'll be able to work for somebody in the future. But with this billion-and-a-half-dollar fake judgment, I won't be able to ever own a company, which is fine with me. But here's the larger issue. We still have appeals uh, at the state of Texas and Connecticut and even part of the judge's ruling, uh, taking the law license of my lawyer, who did a good job as a famous First Amendment lawyer, Norm Pattis, the, the Circuit Court of Appeals overturned uh, her, her suspension of his law license. So people are starting hmm. to wake up. And Mark, Mark Twain said a lie goes halfway around the world before the truth puts its pants on. But once the truth puts its pants on, it tends to win and, 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 and catch up. So people are getting this danger now. And if we can just get Trump in, if we can just not let them stage – a race war and, and and all this stuff they're trying to cook up. If conservatives can just pray and be focused and be vocal and just move forward and stay nonviolent in the face of yep. a mostly peaceful yep. summer yep. that we yep. know is coming, yep. we're yep. going to take this country back. We have to. Yes. Uh, it's already happening in Europe. Alex, uh, one, one thing. Uh, I want you to look, have your lawyer look into a case, uh, Disney against uh, uh, digital, well, not, not digital angel. It was, uh, it became angel studios. What was that? What was that? thing called Stu where you could angel watch vid angel look for a court case against vid angel and Disney they said that they were going after vid angel over copyright but they weren't they were going after them uh it was a personal vendetta a lot like this they Disney was going to put these people out of business forever and the court appointed a restructuring because Disney won and the guy who came in said, one of you is lying. Either Disney is lying and they just want to put you out of business and they just want total control, or you're lying. But when I find out which one it is, I'm going back to the judge. And the judge ruled against uh, Disney and changed everything, okay? Um, you, you could prove, uh, just look at that case, because I think... If you have somebody who is intent as you're restructuring, their job is to not put you out of business. Their job is to restructure and get their clients or their people they're supposed to be working for money. If this, if their intent is to shut you up, I bet you the Disney versus VidAngel uh, court case may help you. That's why I love listening to your show. That's why I love being here and Glenn, because I would never have thought of that. My lawyers, one of my lawyers did, did basically follow something a year and a half ago to the judge saying, look, here's the video clips. Here's the links where they say they don't want yeah. money. They're here to shut him down. And then the judge said, I'll hear that later. But I think it's time to add Disney versus uh, vid angel with yeah. that. Cause we have them saying, I mean, we have like 20 minutes of them in the courthouse in front of a huge, they can't do that. Saying, saying, saying we, this is not about money. We want him off the air. Well, boom. There you go. That, that, that's genius. Thank you so much, Glenn. Yeah. Um, thank you, Alex. And we're going to sit down for a longer conversation when I get back uh, to Texas uh, in September. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you so much, Glenn. God bless you. You bet. By the way, I would... Look, I stood for Bill Maher when he was fired at ABC and what I said at the time was, what part of politically incorrect ABC do you not understand? They fired him because he said something politically incorrect. I took a lot of heat. It was new in my career, and people didn't trust me as a conservative then. And I started sticking up for Bill Maher, and I took a lot of heat. But it was right because it's about the First Amendment. I did the same thing. For Roseanne Barr, I did the same thing for, uh, what was his name, James Gunn, the guy who was the writer-director of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. You cannot only stand up for the people you agree with. 
You must stand up for those people you disagree with. Otherwise, the First Amendment, Second Amendment, all of the amendments mean nothing. Uh, I, I don't care what you think of Alex Jones, and I say this to every conservative outlet. Uh, you should stand by the case of Alec, uh, Alex Jones uh, to make sure this injustice, because this is lawfare. And if you think they won't do it to you, you are sadly mistaken. And unless each one of us at each of our own locations stand up and say, this is an injustice, this is wrong, they'll put each one of us out of business and silence us, and it'll happen faster than you can imagine. I challenge every podcaster, every uh, uh, radio broadcaster to stand up and defend the right for a man to be able to speak 